This video is brought to you by our wonderful sponsors, UEI Test Instruments, Essential Instruments, Outstanding Service, The Quick Connects by Way Technologies, and The Tight Taper, making tight places to tape a breeze. Hello, everybody. I uh, just thought I'd give you guys an update and uh, take you along for this job today. We're going to go change a mobile home coil that's leaking pretty bad. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's it, it's summertime's coming around the corner, but it's the phone is definitely starting to ring. Things are starting to pick up. Uh, the business is going well. I actually just had my first shirts made right here. And uh, there, this is on the back also with my phone number. Uh, they're not all this color. I have, I'm, I like several different colors. So I had this one made, uh, a maroon one, a black one, a gray one, and a uh, navy blue, I think. So, uh, Got my first batch of shirts made. I'm excited about that. Uh, like I said, I'm headed right now. I'm actually headed to Goodman. And uh, for those of you that follow me, you know you know my feelings towards Goodman. Um, not against the people that work at the store, just you know, meet the equipment. I had so much trouble with it. I pretty much refuse to sell it. I do have a job coming up where I would sell it because the man is elderly and he's really on a tight budget. Um, but uh, Goodman, here anyway, their pricing has really went up. I can actually buy a ring condenser for the same price as Goodman wants to sell me one. Now, I don't know. I'm not a dealer. You know, I know they have the A-plus program here, so I'd probably get it cheaper that way, but I'm not going to sign up for that. So for that man, that's another mobile home job. I've got a buddy here that's a carrier dealer, and he's hooking me up with a pain unit. Uh, I'm going to go to carrier and get a pain uh unbelievable cost on the pain i mean it's just really really good price on the pain unit but i'm actually headed to goodman right now because one thing goodman does have uh they have more text calls which there's a lot of supply houses here that have more text and uh, other mobile home brand coils but goodman has the best pricing on mobile home coils um i've called every supply house in town and every other supply house and you know my normal ream supply house has mobile home coils but they're outrageously priced and even my ream supplier said yeah i know it's it's ridiculous how high we are on them but there's nothing they can do you know they're just a local store here that comes from corporate uh guys i gotta pull up through this drive through right here to get me a soda and some other stuff uh i'll get right all right back. so anyway uh yeah, you know, there's nothing they can do about the pricing. It is what it is. So I'm headed over to Goodman to get a Mortex coil. And we're going to go swap it out. This guy could... I condemned this coil almost about a week and a half ago. And he's just now coming up with the funds to change a, a mobile home coil, which doesn't... I mean, I don't charge a whole hell of a lot of money to do that you know mobile home coils are cheap cheaply priced well from goodman anyway and uh you know it's a pretty inexpensive repair his outside unit's in fine condition it's a ring uh a rude or a weather king i don't know what sticker it has on it but it's the cube unit the one with the shitty valves to get to uh, so he's he's definitely low on refrigerant because he was freezing up. Uh, but we're going to pump down what's in there. And it is 410A. We're going to pump it down. Replace the coils. A very simple little job. So, And then 
uh, Friday morning, my wife and I are going out of town. She has an aunt that needs a new condenser and coil in a mobile home. Uh, I had a buddy in the area that I contacted. He went and gassed them up. Hell, this was just a few days ago. Maybe, yeah, maybe even a week ago. He charged them. And uh, she called last night and said the unit's freezing up again already. And the call's not dirty or anything like that. This guy knows what he's doing. And we talked about all that. So, uh, she's got an old, old Nordine mobile home coil with a dry ship Goodman condenser. And I told her, I said, look, if I'm going to come all the way over there to do that job for you, I'm not changing just the coil. Your unit's 10 years old. It ain't got no warranty. It was a dry unit. It's got R22. You're going to have to let me change the outside also. So her and her husband agreed to it. So it's kind of a last minute thing. Today's Wednesday. Uh, I don't even know what the damn date is today. Uh, March. I don't know what the date is. Uh, I know what it is. Uh, t I think it's the 17th. Today's the seventh or the or the 18th, something like that. So it's kind of a last minute job. I have a service call to do today after this coil is done. Then I have to start getting ready to head out of town. Meaning I have to go empty my trailer because my trailer is still loaded down with old equipment from the last change out that I did. And I hate to sit here and ramble, but I know some of you guys like to know how I run the new company and all that because I'm a one-man show. I do have a helper every now and then. And I do have a subcontractor to help me with change outs when I need it. But um, I have to go unload my trailer and I have to go to my aunt's house who lives here in Lafayette or in a little town called Doosan right outside of Lafayette to empty my trailer because I live in town in a rent house and my scrap pile was literally on my side of the driveway last year. Like I couldn't hardly park my truck in the driveway. It, it, the, the back tires were almost touching the road. I had to end up start parking on the shoulder of the road in front of the house. And my landlord, she was okay with with it, but some of the neighbors started complaining about, you know, all the scrap in my driveway, which I totally get. I got all that cleaned up several months ago, and now my aunt, she lives out in the country, my aunt and my uncle, and they have about uh, about a half acre of land, and she lets, she's letting me keep my scrap at her house. So I have to go drive to her house tomorrow morning, empty my trailer, and then go to the supply house and pick up a condenser and a coil. So I'm actually buying from two different supply houses for that job. I'm going to buy the mobile home coil at Goodman because they have the best price. And then I'm going to buy the condenser from my ring distributor, which is also my comfort maker distributor. And I'm going with a comfort maker uh, for two reasons. One, I just like ICP, but the main reason is I'm not going with a ream is uh, cost. I get the ICP a little bit cheaper. And, uh, you know, with family, we all know working for family, you, you don't make much money. And also, her condenser is up in the air on a stand. And because the new reams are so wide, I mean, a three ton and up, is it takes a 40 by 40 pad. Well, the ICPs are not like that. The three tons are pretty tiny. The ream won't fit on her stand. It'll actually hang over. So that's another reason why we're going with an ICP. And I'm not about to start rebuilding her stand and all that. So we'll just go with an ICP and I'll pick up a Mortex coil Damn, this son of a bitch here just about uh, had a head-on collision with me. Uh, pick up a, a Mortex from Goodman for her. 
and a ICP condenser from my range slash ICP distributor. So that's what we're into today. I'm actually pulling up. I'm pulling in Goodman's parking lot right now. So we will uh, we'll see y'all when we get to the job site and we start tearing this coil out and all that. All right, guys. I didn't get any film on my coil change out. So here's some film of a no cooling call. Brand new ream. Condenser's not running. Something wants to make me believe that one of these fuses is burnt. fuses are good all right float switch is not tripped I just went to the attic you got a breaker tripped maybe we have a RA 1460. Drive to real close to the house. You put an ADP air handler instead of a rain. Uh, probably for sizing. It's so tight, I can't even get my nut driver back there. Contactor is not pulled in. And this unit does not have pressure switches. I touched that wire nut. Look, look at that. Hold on. There we go. Y'all heard it. That is trippy. Let me kill the disconnect. You could hear that compressor start getting loud. Watch. Hear that? Look at that. Making a connect, look at that. Look at the red wire. Put y'all back up here. Oh, I see. Broke inside the wire nut. Yep. How long have you been doing this? That long? About 17 years. I grew up doing it with my dad. Okay. Well, you learned it Oh, yeah. You learned it well. My dad's been doing it for almost 40. Yep, you learned it well. Yes, sir. Comes good stock. That's good. 
Is this a good air conditioner? Absolutely, that's what I sell. Ream. Oh yeah. Very good. Yeah. Right. I sell this unit myself. <laughs> Alright, uh, kind of had a little bit of a helicopter there, but not too bad. They want to do a maintenance plan. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do, I'm going to do everything but clean it today. It's about to get dark. I'm not going to clean it today. I'll come back, but I'm checking amps right now. Simple miscommunication between myself and the customer. The customer thought they had a drain issue, but it turns out it's a bad connection in that wire nut. There's the old one. We have... FLA is 1.4. We have 0.9. We'll go to the compressor now. Sorry, I got you guys looking at the ground. Okay, pulling 14. We're looking for Compressor 23. We're at 13.9, so that'll be fine. For a total amp draw of, I could just add them up, but let's do this. I better be careful with the high voltage connection if that low voltage was that loose. There we go. So we got a grand total. of about 14.8 amps. So that'll be fine. I'll recheck the refrigerant levels when I come clean it, but the line is getting cold. I know that's not scientific. It's sweaty. So I'm thinking it's gonna be okay, but I'm gonna clean it. It needs to be clean. You can see how close it is to the house. And, uh, then we'll check the refrigerant when I come back. All right, guys. So we got her fixed up. Uh, sorry I didn't get no film on the coil change out. It was just one of those things uh, that I just really couldn't film. Um, so I filmed this. Really nice couple, an elderly couple. Uh, it's a new system. It's a ADP. They put an ADP air handler with a uh, ream condenser. And I, I wondered why they put ADP air handler with a ream, and I know why now, because it's a five ton, and the ream five ton air handlers are gigantic. I mean, they're huge. Uh, they're like 24 inches wide, and like almost 60 something inches long. And that can be tough to get up a staircase, especially if you work by yourself or just shoot another guy. So I'm pretty positive that's why they went with the ADP air handler which there's nothing wrong with that because the ADP are only short and it's it's a good unit. I've put them in. Um, anyway, this uh, that's about all I got for y'all on this one. I'm sorry it was so boring, mostly me talking, but you know, sometimes it, I used to do blog videos. That was before live was really popular. Well, was I think even around except for the hangouts. But, uh, I don't do the blogs anymore, but I do I do the live stuff. But sometimes during the live stream, you don't talk about what, you know, your day or whatever. I mean, I try to, but uh, anyway. Um, but yeah, that's what happened today and that's what's going on with me right now. I, you know, I have all these change. Uh, let's see, one, I have three change outs on the books right now. Uh, fixing, fixing to buy me a new truck. I've been saving up to pay cash. I'm not trying to finance anything. I don't want any kind of note. I will be paying cash for this truck. Nothing fancy and nothing expensive either. Uh, it's a. It's going to be a 2003 Ford F-150, which is the older body style before they went square, which is actually my favorite body style of Ford. Uh, it's an extended cab with a six and a half foot bed. So... 
I'm hoping to pick that truck up at the end of next week if everything works out. And if I do pick it up, I don't know if I'm gonna do toolboxes, like one across and then two on each side, or if I'm gonna do one of them camper shells with the doors on the side and the, you know, they have shelves in them. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but, we'll, you know, we, we can talk. Uh, hey, if you got an opinion on that, man, drop it in the comments. I would appreciate it. But, uh, like I said, it's like a 2003 or 2002 Ford F-150. Uh, Y'all know which one I'm talking about before they went square. Kind of had the round headlights and stuff, rounded front end. It's at my favorite, my favorite Ford truck, favorite body style. One of, one of them, um, definitely in the top two. Damn good trucks. They were, the, the engines they were using back then were almost indestructible. But it's a really nice truck for me. It's better than this little single cab right here. Um, I'm very grateful for this truck. You know, this was my grandpa's truck and it was passed down to my dad when he passed away. And my dad's been letting me use it. Very grateful for that. Pop, if you're, dad, if you're watching, I appreciate you. Um, but it's just, I'm, I've outgrown it. I need more room. I need a back seat to be able to put stuff in, tools in. So, uh, anyway. All right, guys, I've rambled quite a bit in this video at the beginning, at the end. So, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. And we'll see you guys on the next one.